This is the longest workflow we've built yet for beginner month. So it's building on skills that we've already learned throughout the previous weeks. So hopefully it doesn't feel as intimidating as it maybe looks. So we've got this similar data set that we've been working to in week one, or in fact, it's exactly the same. Um, so we've got information about whether these transactions are happening online or in person, uh, their transaction codes, their values, their customer codes, and their transaction date. And the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that all these transaction codes have uh, DSB at the front of them. I apologize, my cat just stepped on my keyboard and deleted that step. <laughs> but um, don't worry, the filtering actually happens here. So um, if I just open up how I've edited this here, then I've literally got uh, this transaction code and we're filtering to keep only those transactions that have DSB in them or contained within them. And the way that I was able to access that menu is by going to the menu here, going to filter and then wildcard match. So that's how I got that to pop up in the first place. We could also just filter values here and write a contains function. So contains transaction code DSB. Um, Sometimes it's nice to use the interface in prep. Okay, our second thing is we want to change our online and in-person uh, from one and two to be online or in-person, uh, much more human readable values. So we just double click in there um, and can change those to online and in-person, just like in week one. Um, so make sure we change it to a string type first beforehand, otherwise we have trouble doing those changes. Um, and then we want to extract the quarter from our transaction date. So we go to the date field, we go convert dates, and we find our quarter number there. And we choose that. So again, that's nice and simple. That just returns us the numbers one to four for each of those quarters. Now we want to aggregate our data up to the quarterly level. So we want to group by the transaction date and we want to group by the online or in person and sum up the value. So very similar to all the things that we did in week one. So hopefully that was just a nice refresher of those skills. Now let's take a look at that quarters data set. So we've got our online or in person um, field here and we can see those targets for Q1, Q2, Q3 or Q4. Um, in order to compare it to the values that we have up in our aggregate step here, what we'd actually like to do is for those quarters to be in the rows instead. So we're going to pivot this data. So each of these four columns, we want to go ahead and pivot them so that they are now rows instead. So we bring in a pivot step. Um, and I'm just going to, uh, for example, clear this very quickly just so that we can see how I was able to get this to work. So. When you add in the pivot step, then you have this option at the top here, whether you want to do columns to rows or rows to columns. So the default is columns to rows, and that's actually what we want to do. We want to ch change those Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 into rows instead. And then I can uh, click on my Q1, I can hold down the shift key and click on my Q4, and it will highlight all of those in the middle. And then I can just drag them over into the pivoted fields section. And then you can see how it creates for us uh, two new fields instead of those Q1 to Q4. We've now got pivot one names and then Q. So we'll want to rename these fields to be our quarter and our quarterly targets uh, in the next step. So let's go ahead and do that. Just by double clicking in there, we can change the name of our fields. Now, in order to join up our two data sets, we can see that we've got eight fields here. We've got eight fields up here as well. Uh, so they're looking like Sorry, I meant to say eight rows, eight rows here and eight rows here. Um, and so that's that's a good indicator that we've got two data sets here that are at the same level of detail. Uh, we've got one row for each online or in person and for each quarter. But if we were trying to join these two data sets at the moment, then our quarter has Q1 in there, whereas in our quarter field up here, it actually just has the numbers one to four. So we want to get rid of the Q in front of the uh, one, two, three, four here. And we also want to change the data type to be numeric so that those two fields can join together. Okay, so in order to change the data type, um, we'll do that actually, sorry, after we remove the um, Q, so we can go to clean here and remove letters, which will take away the uh, Qs, and then we can change it to a numeric data type instead. So that's the two steps that we apply here. Okay, then we can go ahead and make that join so this time, uh, by default, all that is in the join clause section is online or in person. They make that join together. 
but we can see down here in our join summary that we have eight rows in each data set but in the join result we've actually got 32 rows at the moment um, so what's happening is because they're not joining on their quarters then each of those online or in person is getting the four quarters uh, target values assigned to them so we need to also have another field that's going to match up this quarter to this transaction date here so we just want this row to remain so we can add in an additional join clause here so that'll be transaction date equal to quarter okay and then we can see that our join result is now eight rows as well which is great that's what we want we don't want a duplication happening because of our join then we just go ahead and remove a couple of those extra fields because obviously we had two fields which were the same in our aggregate one step and in our numeric queue step. So we just remove the additional online or in person and the transaction date field. And then we all we have left to do is work out our variance to target. So let's create a calculated field. So there's this button up here to be able to create a calculated field. And in that calculated field, we're just going to write the value minus the quarterly targets and call that variance to target. So it's just going to look at each row and see um, is my value greater than or less than my quarterly target? How much is it exceeding or falling below those targets? Um, and that helps us to see, uh, for example, this Q4 for in-person is very low. Um, that's probably where we'd focus, whereas everything else is kind of around the target level um, and seems to be performing as we'd expect. Then we just add on this output step so that we can output our eight rows of data. Okay, so I hope that was enjoyable and I hope that was pretty straightforward. So thank you very much for watching.